So we stopped fairly quick in the last one, didn't we? Well, that's because of tenant region. We actually need to take a moment and talk about the tenant region. Now, there's some big things we have to think about when we talk about it. It's not just as simple as going, hey, I'm located in X. Well, we've got a bunch of importance to it. The importance of the region is one, our data is located in the region where it's possible. So if you're in the United States and you pick Northwest, it'll try to locate your data there. However, if you happen to be in Ireland, well, it's going to try to locate it in Dublin and so on and so forth. Now, from there, the next thing to realize is billing currency that is also done by region. Next one, the billing cost. Again, very specific to the region. Next one determines features and functionalities available. Now I know it looked like a little drop down. Just where are you located? That's great. But if I've got a company that's located in multiple spots, well, I've got to start determining what we actually need. Next one, it cannot be changed. This is why we stopped. We can't actually change it after we set it. There is no way you literally have to kill your tenant and create a new one. And if you want to use the same tenant name, you have to kill it, wait 90 days and create a new one. So let's talk about the data because that's a big thing everybody's been talking about these days. Where is your data? Well, you can actually learn more about it if you use the O365 data center map and the URLs right there at the bottom and it'll actually show you wherever the data happens to be for your region. So make sure you mark that down where it's going to be because you want to pick your region based on where your head office is going to be because that's where you're billing and your features, functionalities, currency ratios, and so on. You're going to want them there. You'll also want your data there as well. Now, every company is separated slightly different, so it depends on your company. In fact, you guys will know best on which of these match up nicely. But don't just go to that tenant thing, drop it down, and randomly click something. It will not work out okay. Now, what we're going to do now is head over to our demo. We're going to go input our region and we're going to get our personal information in there into our tenant setup. And that will push us on a little bit farther into making sure we get our trial provision for us. All right, let's jump in there again. All right, we're back here. Let's go over to our tenant region, drop that down, and let's go all the way down to United States like that. Now we can go forward and start putting in our personal information. So I'm just going to jump mine in here. Let's make sure we add this in. Yeah, I'm going to blur it out a little bit on you here. Same with the business phone. Make sure you add that in. Perfect. And let's jump in a company name, shall we? So our company name, we're just going to set it as Global Mantics. Now your organization size for a trial will dictate how many licenses you get. I'm just going to turn around and take 10 to 24 to make sure we can do a proper pilot. Let's click Next. Now the fun part. Right here. This is your tenant name. It looks like we're just creating a random email address. But this tenant name right here, this on Microsoft.com account, is going to be your initial global administrator. It's also going to be your tenant name, which is going to set up a lot of things underneath it. So let's take a moment here, and what we're going to do is we're going to pause right now, and we're going to jump in, and we're going to talk about the tenant name. 